Okay. <rire> Good. 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 Bienvenue dans cette nouvelle entrevue. Donc aujourd'hui, nous sommes chez Weather Emporium avec Matt et il y a Marc qui va nous aider à faire la traduction. Uh, thanks to you. And uh, can you introduce you? Yes. Hello. My name is Matthew Pisarsik. I am the owner and founder here at Razor Emporium. We are in Phoenix, Arizona, and behind me is our workshop where we do all of our razor restoration and assembly and manufacturing. I'm so happy to be with you guys today. Thank you so much for coming out to visit us. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Si tu peux nous dire comment et pourquoi tu as créé Razor Emporium. Matt. Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, So it was the year 2005, uh, gosh, 14 years ago, and I was in college um, going to school and I needed to start shaving more. My beard was starting to get more full and I was using the same razor I had been using since high school and that was a Mach 3 razor, Gillette Mach 3. I'm sure you guys have all heard of them or used them. Um, and I started noticing more and more that I was getting irritation on my neck, on my face, and it was painful, it was um, unsightly, it made me feel embarrassed, and I thought there must be something better. And so I decided to start researching, and I heard that instead of three blades, maybe I should try a two blade. And so I got a Gillette sensor, and I tried that. Still no good. And I said, well, if there's two blades, what about just one blade? And that's when I heard about double-edged razors. Um, I didn't have much money, and so instead of trying to go buy a new Mercur or Edwin Jagger razors, because that was the only two choices in 2005, was Mercur or Edwin Jagger, that's it. I said, well, I can go to a antique store and try to find a uh, old Gillette razor, an old double-edged razor, and try that. And so I was able to go out and find uh, Super Speed. If you guys know the Gillette Super Speed, I picked one of those up and got some blades, and it was so much better. I said, This is incredible. But it started the process in my mind. I said, Well, what year is this from? When was it made? You know, what is the history? Because I love, I love history, uh, all areas of history, of, of the world history. Um, when was it from? And I started researching, and there wasn't much information. There was the, the one book out there, uh, the Gillette Collector book, the big green book, and it got me so excited and fascinated. So I just started buying more razors on eBay and going out to antique stores more and more every weekend, traveling with my friends or girlfriends or whoever, and just I fell in love with it. And um, to, to generate money uh, to buy more razors, I started selling the ones I already have. If I had two super speeds, I would sell one so I could buy a Slim or a Fat Boy or whatever. And that's really kind of how it started. It was just me finding razors and cleaning them and buying and selling. Um, that was the impetus so many years ago. The business itself, you know, Razor Emporium, as you see, right on our t-shirt, it was, it was many years later till I actually incorporated it as, as, a, as a real business um, and started to do sales on my own website. I was trying to sell originally on you know, Badger and Blade and these other chat rooms. and uh, They are very friendly if you are there just to talk about shaving, but if you try to sell and do money and, 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 and have sales, they start giving you a lot of rules. And I don't like rules. <laughs> That's why I work for myself. Um, and so I said, I'm not going to follow your rules. I'm not going to follow eBay rules. I'm going to make my own website where I make the rules. And so I built my very first website in 2009. I did it myself. I learned how to code and coded up my own website. I never had done it before, but I was so passionate about shaving that I said, I can learn how to do this. I'm smart. I can figure it out. And that's just been my attitude the whole time. I, I can figure it out. So that's how the business started. <laughs> Sorry, that's a very long answer. <laughs> I'm very long-winded. Thanks, man. Yes. <laughs> Okay, ouais, mais on peut le demander parce que ça va sortir plus tard. On va demander des projets. Oui, c'est ça. OK? 
Three of us? This is incredible. I've never, I love the French language. It's so beautiful. I can speak Spanish. Yeah. I have to, some of my employees, but. Okay, wait, c'est bon. Quel service, oui, quel service tu peux apporter? I feel so honored to be in front of your audience. I'm serious, I'm serious, thank you very much. I feel very honored. I'm, I'm being I, I, I know. I, I know we seem unprepared, but that's how Frenchmen do. <laughs> I must be French because I'm unprepared as well. <laughs> okay, but okay. Si tu peux nous dire quel service tu proposes. So, um, as the business started growing, um, I was selling our own razors that we were fixing up, and customers started asking me, "Hey, can I send you my razor?" So you can fix it up the same way you fixed up yours when you sold it. And I said, well, I don't see why not. I did it for my razor, I'll do it for your razor. And so that started our process of offering services to customers. And today we have uh, just a few. We have what's called our razor tune-up service. And that is designed for safety razors. Um, it's designed just to clean and polish and adjust and sanitize, but keep all the original finish together. And that's a very affordable service, uh, $29, $39 really, it just, it just, it's just very nominal. Um, it keep all the original aspects of the razor. It, however, if your safety razor is more damaged, let's say the plating is missing, let's say it has corrosion and damage to it, it really needs to come in for a higher level of service and we call that our razor revamp service. And that is designed to take apart the entire razor and um, polish the pieces and clean them, and then get a, a, a new coating of electroplating, uh, put on nickel or rhodium or gold or silver or rose gold, and then put it back together and sanitize and adjust it and send it home. And we do all the adjustments to factory specifications with the blade gap and you know all the turning, the colors, uh, if we have to do painting, it's all to factory specifications. We want to make sure it's very authentic. There's one thing about loving history, it's that you want to honor history. And I try to honor Gillette's history by doing the same kind of processes. Gillette used to offer nickel and rhodium and gold, and we offer those same finishes, and silver, of course. Um, that's for the safety razor world. Uh, we also offer brush restorations. So if you have an old shaving brush and it needs new hair, we can do that for you or polish it up. Um, for, the, for the razor straps, uh, we can take an old, Razor strap may be your grandfather's strap, and we can recondition the leather, and we can make it look beautiful again and brand new. Um, and then last but not least, we do straight razor restoration. So if you have an old straight razor that needs to be polished, if it's all patinaed or rusted, we can polish the metal. We can sharpen the edge so it is good for shaving and, and it's shave ready again. Uh, we can also create new custom handles uh, out of acrylics, or woods, or carbon fiber, or um, horn, and so we can make a brand new pair of handles for your old straight razor. Um, currently, that's our only services we offer, but if, if there's another one that comes up in the world that we, we see a need, we will try to fill it. We, we definitely want to be a, a resource for the whole, rest, uh, the whole world of, of wet shaving. And every day, we receive razors from all over the world. I'm very honored that people trust our business to send in their razor and many times, and I, my employees, you can ask them right now, we assume every time that it's an heirloom razor, we assume every time it's grandfather's razor or some special family object, and we have to treat everyone like that. Many times, of course, we know it's not. They got it on eBay, they got it at a, at a, a, a thrift store, antique store, but we always assume it's very special and we take care of it. I was just showing you guys how we keep track of all the parts and all the pieces, and we have all the paperwork, so there's no confusion. And we take photographs, we try very hard to make sure that your razor is safe when it comes to us and it comes back to you and you're very satisfied with our service. <laughs> uh, it's possible to have a Rex to show on video, please? Yes, I can go grab a Rex. The what? It's possible to have a Rex for Oh, okay. Comment en es-tu arrivé à créer le Rex Ambassador? Uh, Matt. So, just like my, my love and my passion of, of old razors, old Gillette razors, you know, after many years of servicing them and fixing them, 
um, it's hard to not want to make something. It's it's very it's very almost frustrating to always look at someone else's product and be having to repair it, and then think to yourself, I could make this better. And um, when I wanted to make a razor, I thought to myself, well, being a lover of history, what has been something that was beautifully made in the past that maybe I could bring to the future? And of course, the most beautiful adjustable razor ever made was by the French, <laughs> the Gibbs. And of course, I, I'm not joking, I, I love the Gibbs. Now, I was told about the Gibbs razor um, because I'm a Gillette collector. People know I collect old razors, but it's always Gillette. I have a couple Schick or a couple this or that, but it's almost always Gillette. So, uh, do you guys know Icon razors? Years and years of Icon, right? They, we were the very first retail store in the United States to carry Icon. This is like 2010, 2011. And they were one of the very first stainless steel razors on the market. I mean, Greg of Icon was, I, in my opinion, way ahead of his time. He was already thinking about stainless steel. He was already thinking about different ways to manufacture it. And he was a friend of mine. And we carried his products and we loved it. And he told me, he said, you know, if you ever want to make an adjustable, you should look at the Gibbs. And I said, the Gibbs? And I, you know, I, I got one on eBay and I, I fell in love with it. I loved how simple it was. You know, when I, when I think of a fat boy or a toggle, they're very beautiful, but they're very complicated. They're, you know, butterfly, doors open, the click, 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 all that. It's, it's beautiful, but it's more and more pieces. And I like simple. Simple is less pieces. The more simple, elegant design. And so we looked at the Gibbs, and there was a few things about it we did not like. And the number one thing, of course, was that the blades, you had to use the Gibbs blades. And if you wanted to use a Gibbs today, you had to cut the little you know, in the little notches in the corners to put a double-edged blade on. And I said, well, that's easy. So, being a lover of Gillette, we said, let's put the Gillette Tech-style uh, blade tabs, the way that Gillette holds the blades. And the other thing that, um, that we did not like, of course, was the handle. The handle is plastic, and it's very prone to being broken. If you tighten it too hard, it'll split and crack over time. If it gets dropped, it can break. So I didn't like that. So we wanted to make a better handle. And so we made a very simple uh, handle, in my opinion. Uh, the Gibbs has only vertical lines on it. And so I said, well, that's nice, but it slips through your fingers. Your fingers are wet, it slips. So I said, well, just put horizontal lines. And I didn't think it was very special, but everyone seems to really like that. That it's really grippy, you know. Um, and then last but not least, we said, I don't like that the knob falls out. Now that every time I would hand someone a razor, they would say, oh, what are you working on? I'd say, here. And I always watch their hands. I always watch how they handle it. And the moment with the Gibbs, they do this, it drops. If they don't know what they're doing, if they know the design, they understand it. But the very first time is always what's called intuition. If it's not intuitive, they, will, they won't know. And so I said no. Donc, on démonte ici pour démonter la tête pour mettre la lame. Et après, le manche en plastique. Voilà, il se démonte. We'll put a little clip. And it's very simple. It's just this little tiny, you know, stainless steel clip that just helps to hold us in. And this is, you know, Mercur does this. And um, there was another version of this razor made by Persona. The Persona Micrometric, and they did that as well. Okay. But, so I wanted to incorporate that design. Um, but the other things we've changed as we've started to manufacture it is um, the width of the guard. This is a different dimension than Gibbs. The angle that the blade is at is different than Gibbs. Um, and the adjustment nut. So one thing about this razor is if you try to make the guard go seesaw like this, you can't. You notice that? It barely, barely will move. Never so slightly. And the reason for that is we took this nut, the adjustment nut, and it's counterboard. So this part with the numbers goes into the nut. 
so it helps to stabilize it so it can't shimmy down. It has to go perfectly up and down because it's sitting inside of this nut. It's called a counterbore. And that was another feature we changed because on the Gibbs, they're very beautiful and most times they have such good tolerances they don't do that. But when you try to manufacture it yourself, you, we had that problem. The, ver the first couple razors we, we made in 2017, they had that problem. If they were adjusting, they would kind of do this or get a little slanted. And I said, no. So we, we changed that in 2018. We put that, that counterboard nut. But um, you know, the reason we made this razor is because it was beautiful, it was elegant, but we, we wanted an adjustable razor back on the market. There was none. You know, we had the Mercur Progress, we had the Parker variant, uh, we have the, um, the Mercur Vision and Mercur Futur. Uh, those are beautiful, but they're, to me, they're either made out of zinc alloy, so to me it's not a, it's not a, a long-lasting material that'll last for decades and decades. Um, and I said there has to be a stainless steel razor back on the market. There has to be an adjustable stainless steel razor. And I saw a big hole, and there's a lot of people making three-piece razors, um, like Timeless and Blackland and all these, and they're great, they're beautiful. But I want it to be different. So we thought for our very first razor, we're gonna show that we can do something very unique and very complicated and make an adjustable razor here in America out of stainless steel. And I think we've done a good job with it and I'm very happy. And it's, it, honestly, it's my, my favorite razor. But at the same time, all the adjustments I've made to it were so that I liked it. <laughs> because I, call me selfish. I did give it to some friends. I said, do you like this? But ultimately I wanted me to like it. And it, I guess a lot of other people like it too. And maybe that means that my beard is so troublesome that it's been a, a good asset to me. <laughs> that it's made me strive to have a, a really good razor. Sorry. Again, a very long answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. <laughs> yes, people say, why don't you put the click, click, click? And I said, you have no idea. It's, it's three more parts, and it'd be more and more money. Yeah. And it's trouble. That little clicker breaks. We finally, we've actually now manufactured a, a replacement for the Gillettes. Uh, so if you, oh, yeah? if you have an old Gillette, we actually have our own replacements, finally. It took us a long time. The razor is entirely usine at Phoenix, or it's just assembled at Phoenix? Uh, no, here in Phoenix. In fact, later today, once I'm done with um, our, our interview today, I actually need to go drive out to the machine shop and pick up our brand new product that is being released today, and we're showcasing a big shape tomorrow, uh, which is the Rex Ambassador stand. And I wish I had one in my hands. Uh, I had a prototype, and my photographer has it right now. We did photograph it literally last night. We, it's on the website today, uh, but the new stand, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a big, solid piece of metal and has a little peg and it, it holds the razor like this, uh, right, just a little pin that holds it. It's not like the regular ones that have to go in and hold like this. I love it because it showcases the entire razor. Uh, but yes, we manufacture right here in Phoenix and I love that because it's local, of course, but I also have control. I can go visit the machine shop and talk to the owner and, and, and look at the product right there. And I go out there every few weeks and, and pick, pick up parts and talk with them. We discuss things. Um, so I love that. And we do all the assembly right here in our workshop. Um, and we do all the laser engraving in our, in our shop right here. So yes, the entire thing is done here in Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks, Matt. Yes. Can I get some water real fast? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Your, right throat, it's, it's your shop. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. you, you're the one kicking us out, kicking us out now. It's not. Uh, <laughs> so, um, with Razor Emporium, uh, we are always trying to design new things. On the horizon, we just today, another product today we're releasing is um, a new khaki style kit. Um, it's kind of a replica of what you see from uh, the First World War, uh, kind of like Gillette used to use with the fabric. And we had one before, but someone was making that for us, and it was, in my opinion, it was okay. We've, we've made it much more authentic, authentic to the original Gillette um, uh, khaki kits from 1917, 1918. Um, honestly, I think I'll be focusing a lot more on Rex in the next year. You know, we started, people think it's the same business, it's not. I actually have two businesses. Uh, it's Razor Emporium is my retail business and my service uh, and vintage razors. 
Uh, but Rex is a manufacturing company, and that's where we're making everything ourselves. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, today we have a new stand, and I don't even have one in front of me, I'm so sorry. Um, the little stand for the ambassador. But, I have a new razor we're working on, and um, it's going to be much more traditional. Um, you know, this is a beautiful razor, but it's, off, it's, it's, it's expensive, and I know it's expensive. It's hard to make something in the United States with this many pieces and not have it be expensive. So, the next razor from us will be a traditional three-piece style stainless steel razor. Um, my machine shop is already working on prototypes right now. Um, it, will, it will not necessarily be revolutionary. Um, we are gonna try to apply some of the same styling of the ambassador to it, so it looks like a like a product line. I always tell my machinists, I say, look at BMW, the cars. You know a BMW the second you see it. You see the, the headlights, the tail lights, the fenders, you know it's a BMW. Well, same thing. I want I want the next razor to people know it's a Rex razor just by looking at it. Uh, it will have a different grip for the handle. A cartridge razor, that is a direct response to double edge. You see the Gillette is not stopping production, they're actually increasing production of double-edged blades in their Russian plants and other places in the world. We may see something from Gillette, but it won't be branded Gillette for double-edge. I have heard from sources at Procter & Gamble that they may release a double-edged razor via the Art of Shaving store. Now the thing is, Art of Shaving is owned by Procter & Gamble, but they have, in my opinion, the wrong the wrong spirit, the wrong vision of shaving. They have told me that they think all of this razor stuff is fancy and high-end and sophisticated. And all those are true. But double-edged shaving can also be economical, affordable, and practical. And Art of Shaving has none of those options when you go into their store. And so until they understand that people are choosing this, yes, because it's enjoyable, Yes, because it makes their, their skin look better or their face look better, but also because you can do it on a budget. If you are in, we, in fact, we have so many customers that come to us who are in college and they, want to, they say, I want a straight razor, not because it's cool, but because it's cheap. Or I want a double edge because it's cheap. And I want a cheap Parasso soap or I want a cheap whatever, Arco Shave Stick. And a lot of cheap people love double-edged razors. Also, a lot of people that, that want to spend $250 on a razor love, love double-edged and wet shaving. But I think we'll see something from Gillette. I think they're going to continue to get squeezed. Uh, we see now Harry's has been huge. Dollar Shave Club, you know, got a very big buyout from Unilever for $1 billion. $1 billion. Um, so for $1 million. <clears throat> so, I think we're going to see more movement like that happening. We may see another uh, emerging company. I, I've been given um, products from Dorco uh, to test, and they're out of, I, I believe, Korea, if I'm not mistaken. Um, South Korea, obviously. Uh, they have, they're doing uh, four, five, I think now they have a six blade cartridge razor. In fact, I think I, I reviewed it, if I'm not mistaken. I do so many reviews. I believe I, they, they did send a six, six bladed cartridge razor, which to me is insane. But it shows that they're trying something new. Um, Gillette had it really good from the 80s and 90s and 2000s, but this wet shaving world is growing and things like Big Shave are, are helping it grow. Things like your guys' blogs, your guys' uh, you know forums you're on, your YouTube channels, our YouTube channel, all of us, we all have uh, influence, and they don't know how to deal with that. Gillette doesn't know how to deal with that. Um, they put out that commercial uh, a few a few months ago, and I think in January or February, and uh, our business exploded because of their commercial. They had this commercial. I'm not sure if it debuted in Europe. That um, talked about how guys need to be better and toxic masculinity and I'm not going to get into my personal opinion of that but their customers did not like it because I received so many phone calls so many emails so many YouTube comments that I am here because Gillette will never get my money again I'm going to double edge I'm going to straight razor shaving because I'm not going to be made to feel like an idiot from the company I give money to and so they're, they're missing the ball 
They're completely missing it. If they want to grow their world, I'm not saying they have to go double-edged. It would be nice to see Gillette come back, and I would love to see a Gillette razor. I, I would buy one. I would love to buy a Gillette double-edged razor. Maybe we'll see it happen. But they have done a good job. Maybe they need to do a better job with more affordable cartridge prices. People are sick of a 27,000% markup, and that's not a made-up number. That is literally what Gillette says their markup is on cartridges, 27,000% from the manufacturing cost to the retail price. That's insanity. So I think, I think we're gonna see more and more uh, the wet shaving grow, and the way you can help out is to tell your friends Tell your brothers. I've got everyone in my in my world gets razors or soaps or blades for Christmas and birthdays and graduations. That's all I ever give away. Because to me, yes, it's a gift. You can use it, but it also changes. It makes a small change. And, it, and we need every one of you to make that small change and help tell someone else, hey, ditch the cartridge razor. Try out something more quality. Enjoy your shave. And that's the other thing Gillette's missing. When they talk about art of shaving, they're missing that people are doing this because they love it. I had these wonderful people come to my shop today and I showed them our new soap and everyone gathered around like kids at a candy store to smell a soap. We love it. Everyone wants to hold a razor. Everyone wants to touch a brush and run your fingers through the hair. It's fun. It's enjoyable. And shaving can be that way. It does not have to be some mediocre, 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 Medi mediocre. Mediocre. Sorry, the Frenchman had to correct me. <laughs> mediocre. <laughs> um, shaving experience. It doesn't have to be painful or. Uh, you can enjoy it. You can have your cup of coffee and enjoy yourself. And I think that's something they're missing. And until they get with that, they're going to continue to miss out. And we're going to get bigger and we're going to get better. <laughs> There's your commercial. <laughs> Comme d'habitude, je mettrai les liens dans la description. N'oubliez pas non plus que Matt a une chaîne YouTube et une deuxième avec Douglas de PI. I just say uh, you have a YouTube channel yes. and another with Douglas. Yes, oh, I'd rather be shaving. Yes, yeah. yes. Maybe someday that'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thanks to you. Yes. Et j'espère que ça vous plaira. Ciao. Parlez-vous français. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thanks, Matt. Yes. Uh, there's a couple.